Hey y'all, it's your host, Avery Carl. Welcome to the Short Term Show special episode series on Scottsdale, Arizona. So in these 10 episodes, we are gonna take a deep dive into the Scottsdale market, but I wanna note a couple of things for you guys first. So if you are looking for current income numbers and current purchase prices, or you wanna set up a search of Scottsdale properties, You can do that at our website, theshorttermshop.com. You can also connect with us there to get connected with our Scottsdale agents or any of our other markets, any agents in the other markets that we work in. So hope you guys enjoy our Scottsdale mini series and we'll catch you guys later. Be sure to join our Facebook group. It's called Short Term Rental, Long Term Wealth. Same title as my book. And we'd love to connect with you there as well. Thanks guys, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to episode one of the Short Term Show special episode series on investing in Scottsdale. Today, we are going to talk about why anyone might want to invest in this market. So we have our two Scottsdale agents here to help us talk about that. We've got Leslie and Jessica. Leslie, do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Sure. So I'm Leslie Carvajal. I'm one of the Scottsdale agents, as Avery mentioned. Um, I am an investor. And so I'm really excited to be able to share my experience, my personal experience with investing, but also help my clients in the process of finding their own investments here in this market. Um, I am born and raised, so I am a native of um, Arizona. And so I feel like I know pretty much all things Maricopa County, which which I think benefits me in helping my clients. All right. Thanks, Leslie. Jessica, introduce yourself really quick. Hi, I'm Jessica. I am a short-term shop agent in the Scottsdale area. Leslie is on the west side of Phoenix in the Valley area. I'm on the east side. I am, I'm not a native to Arizona. I come from out of state, but I kind of have that out of state perspective where I'm still fascinated by a lot of things, Arizona and a lot of things, Scottsdale. So it's a very, very cool place. Um, And I'm really excited to be on this podcast. I've listened to the other episodes with the other agents and it's, it's fabulous. So I can't wait to have this available for my clients. All right. So let's talk about, let's just dive right into why people might want to invest here. So why do tourists come to this area? What do they come to do? Or what are what are they coming to do? Or maybe what are they coming to escape? I would say our weather. I'll just jump right in and say it. I feel like people come because of our year-round ability to um, partake in activities, um, sporting events. Golf is huge here. Sports tend to want to be here because our weather permits outdoor activity during, you know, winter time, let's just say. Um, so definitely our weather, we have a lot of what we like to call snowbirds coming specifically during this time, all the way up probably till about mid April. And so our state becomes pretty busy from now until then with visitors and activities and And just really people wanting to come um, and enjoy our climate. Yeah, totally. So we average like 325 sunny days a year. And our best weather is kind of flip-flopped from the rest of the nation where we have our best weather between like October-ish to Mm April-ish. So when everybody else is chilly, we're hanging out in the sun, you know, we're putting our sunglasses (laughs) on. So so I think that's a big attraction. Like she said, the snowbirds, people just wanting to come escape the winter weather and other climates. Uh, Scottsdale is part of the valley of Arizona, the desert portion of Arizona. We have some mountain markets, but this is where people come to get warm. All right. That makes sense. So you guys get a lot of people from like Montana that will maybe have a, a almost said a summer home, a winter home in the Scottsdale area. Absolutely. Totally. I used to live, my neighbor used to come from um, Pennsylvania, actually. And they would oh. come every October And, you know, they would stay depending on the weather in April, whether it be mid April or the end of April, they would leave, but they would stay for, you know, that time period and and just enjoy it. They would get out of, you know, their snow and they would just tell me all of these stories. I'm like I said, I'm born and raised here, so I'm not super familiar with snow. I've been in the snow, but I don't I've never lived in it. I've never had to experience it in that way. So I, I love hearing their stories about, you know, the inches X amount of inches deep worth of snow that they have to walk through or scrape the ice off their cars. Like it's foreign to me, but I love hearing about it. (laughs) I love hearing about snow. (laughs) I love hearing about it. Yeah. I don't like to be in the cold, but I like hearing about it. Yeah, totally. So, um, I worked at a little, uh, restaurant, um, here in town and we had people from like the East coast, North Carolina, South Carolina, New York is a big place. People come here from Chicago, um, Alaska is a big place because they have harsh winters. Um, the Dakotas, 
Montana, Idaho. Um, we even get people over from California, but, and then if you live here, um, like me and I have family and friends from out of state, they find excuses to come visit during the nice winter weather. Um, so, so yeah, people love to come here. And the, like she said, the, the weather accommodates for events and, uh, and sports as well. So we have like 200 golf courses in Scottsdale, about 50 of those are public, but we also have major league baseball spring training here. Um, they have practices and games. You can go to the practices for free. Um, you can go to the games and they're actually really cheap. There's 15 different major league baseball teams that, that practice here in the spring. And Scottsdale has two stadiums where three different teams practice and have games. So, and then there's the old town, the downtown area with all the art and the museums. There's the old town area that's historical also has a ton of shopping restaurants, nightlife, there's uh, shopping, shopping in the downtown area. We have one of the largest malls in the United States, and we have like 2,500 high-end retailers, one-off boutiques and, and, and malls as well. Uh, conferences and meeting, there's tons of, of conference halls and meeting rooms. Um, I think there's 24. Five, maybe over 4,000 square foot just in Scottsdale alone. So, and then of course the, the outdoor, now we don't have, we have tons to do here in Scottsdale. We don't have a beach, but we do have mountains. The McDowell mountain range is on the Northeast part of Scottsdale. And so there's 400 miles of well-maintained trails there. Um, and also tons of outdoor stuff to do as well. So, and we have, lakes. okay. <laughs> and what? And we have lakes. Oh, okay. Cool. So lots and lots of sports stuff, not necessarily sports for people to do, but sports for people to watch and be a part of mm -hmm. and lots of snowbird activity. Would you say that the high season in this market is more summer or more winter or is it with the exception of, you know, the few times of year that are a shoulder season for everyone, like right before kids go back to school and right before they get out of school between spring break and summer, aside from those little shoulder times, when would you say is the high season or is it kind of all year? It's more winter, but we have about, I'd say about 10 and a half really good months in our state. Um, we do have, you know, July and August where I'd say it's probably the hottest and, mixed with a little bit of humidity. So it's a, it's, it's a lot to, to handle if you're not used to it. But that is during our summer months where kids are out of school. So we still do get visitors and vacationers here. But I would say the, the peak season is winter for sure. Okay, that's good. Because I think there's a lot more markets that have a summer high season than a winter high season. So I think that this market fits in really nicely for someone who maybe already has a few short-term rentals that have a summer high season to buy here and have a flip-flopped high and low season. So you don't have all of your short-term rentals in the low season at the same time. So I think that's a really important call out because a lot of markets have that summer high. Oh, you guys get a lot of clients that are actually appealed by that where you know, they may have a mountain um, property or two or a beach property, and it's appealing to them to have a, a little bit of like a flip flop in their um, occupancy or their activity that their properties are, how their properties are performing during those months. Okay. And how hot does it get in the hottest months? Let's talk about that. Uh, it can get up to like the 120s with, you know, if, if we're like in August, it could be 122 with, I don't know with some humidity mixed into it, which feels, nah. I, I'm not a huge, I'm, I'm not from, I've lived in Hawaii for six months. So I've lived six months out of the state and it was in a humid climate and I was done. I couldn't, I was like, I would take the dry heat over humidity, humidity any day. I don't know. So for me, it's, I, no bueno. <laughs> okay. 122. That is very, that is yeah, extremely it's pretty hot. hot. We so bring the heat over I, here. I won't talk about the summer we had this year because it was oh, a no. God. But yeah, we'll have July, especially. We'll have lots of days over 110. Um, we do get a stretch of over 115, but it's a dry heat. And I come <laughs> from I come from like the mid-south where it is really humid and where you just like sweat 
um, starting at like 85 here. It's, it's just a different type of heat. You don't sweat near as much people here in Arizona, when they start sweating, they start freaking out, but you just can't touch anything. Like your steering wheel, the fence, like the sun is really, really, really bright and harsh here. So it's just a different heat. Um, I don't, really mind it that much coming from humid, a uh, hu- more humid part of the country. There are still things to do and there are still people out and about like, I kid you not, I will drive by a golf course and there will be people out playing golf in a hundred plus weather. And there'll be, be, be people walking on the sidewalk, riding their bikes. Um, I don't know if they're crazy, if they're from here or from out of state, but, but yeah, there are still people out and about and doing things. But busy season is definitely, I'd say, October through March. Um, most of the big events, the big annual events we have are January, February, March. Okay. And you guys get a lot of bachelorette parties in that market too, don't you? Yes. Um, Old Town Scottsdale is probably notorious for that. So I feel like if that's you know the way that you're marketing a property, if you were to purchase in our market, um, South Scottsdale is probably where you'd want to be. It's just closer to everything. Not to say you couldn't get a bachelor bachelorette pad in in North Scottsdale. It's just not in the heart of where everyone is at for that occasion. Okay. Uh, Any other particular types of visitors you get? So we talked about we've got people wanting to do sports stuff, golf, snowbirds, bridesmaids, conferences. I know I've been to several conferences in, in Scottsdale, so lots of conference action. Let's talk a little bit about... No, wait, there's something I wanted to ask in relation to conferences. Oh, so something that I think is really cool about this market is that it's, I call it a vacation-ish market. There's a few others in the country that I would also call vacation-ish. And what I mean by that is a lot of people vacation there, but it's also part of a larger metro area. So there's more opportunity for those folks that maybe they're not comfortable buying in a beach market or a mountain market where it's only vacationers that you're getting. So you probably could never convert those types of properties in those types of markets to long terms or medium terms or what have you. But what I like about this market is you get those vacationers. But if an investor ever decided, hey, I don't think I like doing this short term thing, you could convert it to other types of real estate. So I think that that that's particularly cool. And this is a, a good opportunity for those investors who might be a little scared to do a true vacation market because there's really no exit strategy other than just selling it. Uh, But here you've got a lot of options. Do you guys have anything to, I mean, there's not really anything to add to that, but I think that that's a really cool feature of this market. I've had a couple of clients who are interested in you know, kind of flip-flopping between short-term and midterm, um, specifically accommodating, you know, Mayo Clinic patients or travel nurses. They want to be specifically by, you know, either the Mayo Clinic or a larger hospital, which we have, you know, a a couple in the Valley, but that they, you know, maybe they know somebody personally, and I'm speaking from experience because I have a client who, you know, wants to accommodate a family friend that needs a place to stay for like two and a half months and primarily wants to be, you know, no more than like 10 minutes away from the Mayo Clinic. So it's it's about being able to, I guess, change the trajectory either because you want to or you have to, or, you know, the decision needs to be made down the road, knowing that um, our market can accommodate almost all types of rentals, whatever, um, whatever class you, you need to be in or want to be in. Yeah, for sure. I would agree with that um, 100%. The Phoenix area actually broke economic growth uh, records for the last five years, and we're set to uh, break more economic growth records, Um, as well as we have a ton of national and international companies moving in the area. Google is putting up a place in Mesa. There is uh, lots of tech coming to the Valley. So like she said, I've had clients that are interested in doing the short-term rental thing during the the peak season, the peak tourism season. But also there's there's just so much here as far as business, residents, even people coming to visit family, stay with family. And there's so many reasons to be in the area and even to be in the area for months at a time during those slower times of the year when the, when it's you know so hot. So there are lots of 
midterm opportunities, I think, um, for the Scottsdale area, because there's there's a lot of other reasons to be here. Like you say, it's not it's not quite so heavily dependent on tourism. And the, let's talk about the longevity of the tourism in this market. So is this something that, you know, like in Austin 15 years ago, where nobody really went to Austin, and all of a sudden, everybody's going to Austin all the time, and it's the thing to do? Or Leslie, is this something that like, you knew when tourist season was when you were growing up here? I definitely think that when our our weather started cooling down, I feel like even even younger, I feel like I I remembered feeling like it was really busy and 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 when we would go to like the malls in Scottsdale, it would be really fun because there was a lot of people, but you know, I'd hear my parents complaining because of all the traffic or whatever. But I just always thought that it was definitely um definitely busy and definitely, you know, having visitors come, you know, from other states, family members that would would want to be here. Um, so I feel like it's always been like that. It may have been, you know, um, it may have gotten busier more recently within the last five, six years, but I feel like I've always felt like people wanted to to come to our state from, you know, specifically family members from out of town. They, you know, wanted to be here. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's Arizona has always been a tourist destination. People love to go to Scottsdale and then, you know, go up to Sedona and all the stuff up there. So it's a pretty good jumping off point to get to other really cool attractions, like in the Northern part of the state, the national parks and things that are all up around there. So uh, I, I think that it's definitely an area that's got the longevity of tourism that you're looking for when it comes to investing in a short term. But again, you have that flexibility. If you decide you don't like it or you don't like the seasonality of it, you can convert it to a long term. You can convert it to a medium term. There's there's all kinds of options, which there are not in other markets. So one thing I had written down to ask you guys uh, is that do you guys have national disasters? Leslie, I think I've heard you talk about this. No, zero. Which again, can be really appealing with some of the clients that I've spoke to because they're like, what? Um, it does. Our insurance rates are a lot less because of that. Um, so that's appealing. But yes, no natural disasters. Um, and I, as an investor, when I was looking at different markets and kind of pricing things out, I tend to forget about that because I don't have to deal with those things. And um, so it was kind of like take me back moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's insane. Some of some of the natural disasters and some of the some of the costs that are associated with all of that. Oh yeah. I <laughs> I, I totally think that Arizonans are completely spoiled when it comes to the weather because it's probably gonna be warm and sunny. And if it's not, it's probably gonna be hot and sunny. We do have monsoon season where uh, our rainy season, which is it's, um, you know, hearing people from Arizona talk about it, it's less and less every year, but um, especially in the valley and the, you know, denser areas, but you'll, you'll get rain, um, hard rains during that season, but it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty short stint. But other than that, we don't get high and, and like a, a windstorm will blow in and a dust storm will blow in first before it rains. But, um, you know, the most I've seen is a little bit of, you know, in the, in their extreme weather, a little bit of roof damage, a little bit of damage to some trees and plants. Sometimes and hail, like sometimes hail damage, but yeah. Yeah. But I mean, um, coming from the mid south where we have like tornado warnings time and crazy and you know I mean but I would say so maybe not natural disasters but in the more rural areas they do have fires from the storms from the lightning because it is so dry but they have like wildland crews that 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 work on those but besides that I'd say like she says the insurance is is a lot cheaper here because you're not at risk for if you're not in a flood zone you're not at risk for floods like you are other places you're not at risk for storms and and things like that it's we're we're really spoiled when it comes to the weather we're also known to like not be able to drive when it's raining i feel like that's a <laughs> these Arizonans don't know how to drive in the rain cuz we don't get it a lot um <laughs> so that was funny it's just when you when you mentioned our monsoon i'm like Nobody likes to drive during monsoon because we can't. We don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I have to remind people to um, change their windshield wipers. I have to remind my son to change his windshield wipers because <laughs> the the sun and the heat has like you know worn them out because we haven't used them yeah. in a year. You know, uh, yeah. 
Well, that's that. I didn't even think about that part. The fact that insurance is going to be more affordable there because you're not having to worry about things like hurricanes and forest fires and all that. We just had one pop up in the Smokies last night. So we were looking at all of our properties. It's it's fine now, but it definitely does cause wild swings in, in insurance prices. So that's definitely a good tip. And you're probably right. not going to have cancellations because of... <laughs> that's yeah. also a really good point because we get cancellations for whether people wanting to. And so you would just have a much more steady, predictable stream of income than in other totally. places where, where you have to worry about weather. So... All right. Last question I want to ask is surrounding the regulation. So everything else about this market sounds great. I think everybody has been waiting for me listening to ask about regulations because it doesn't matter how great a market is or how low the insurance is or all these exit strategies that you have and a good time to have a high season if the regulations aren't there. So can y'all talk a little bit about what the regulations are in this market? I think the list seems lengthy, but they're all pretty standard. Um, You have to register your property. Uh, There is a registration fee of $250 per property that you have going to be rented. And then the other, you know, regulations and and rules are really, you know, you go through a background check, you have to make sure that you pass that you have to have, you know, insurance on the property, you have to maintain the landscaping, they want you to have, you know, clean cleaning of properties, which is all a given when you're when you're doing short term rentals, make sure that the landscape is done, and you have, you know, a cleaner come and clean each turn, you have most of our, I will, so I will say that I advise my clients to have a pool. Um, you know, looking for properties with pools is probably the most beneficial if you can afford it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of properties out there that come with them. So you don't have to worry about the cost of building. And so if you do have a property with a pool, one of the regulations are that you have, um, you know, a barrier, whether that be a gate or, you know, extra high door handles on the doors or, you know, sliding door chimes, just something um, for security, especially with children. Um, Outside gates need to self-latch in case a neighbor's kid gets into your yard, things like that. So they're really um, in order to maintain a level of security, but also kind of to keep the properties, you know, upkeep really with the landscaping and, and the pest control and things like that. All right. What do you have, Jess? So Scottsdale to me and Arizona just as a state is really super short-term rental friendly. The state of Arizona put in a law in 2017 for local cities and towns, including Scottsdale, not to be able to regulate based solely on their classification of use. So therefore, rentals, short-term rentals are allowed in Scottsdale by law. However, the state law does not preclude the ability for an HOA to regulate or restrict short-term rentals. The, the city of Scottsdale, and I'll like get more into that here in just a second, but the city of Scottsdale actually has videos on YouTube of how to get your short-term rental set up. And they have the city of Scottsdale's website to have a ton of resources for each step, like how to, how to obtain your transaction privilege sales tax, your, how to apply for a Scottsdale license, um, how to notify the neighbors, complete your county requirements. They have all a ton of resources and, and they make everything pretty easy. I'd say give yourself 30 to 45 days maybe to set all that up. And I think you can even start that process while you're under contract with your property, I would I would suggest probably not starting that until after you were through your inspection period. But but yeah, if if an HOA allows it in their original bylaws, then they can't change that in the future. So HOAs are here anyways in Scottsdale are going to be case by case. Um, you're going to want to review the CCNRs. But if they write it into their CCNRs originally that they are allowed, then they can't change that in the future. Um, however, there there could be some verbiage there that they maintain their right to change that in the future. So you just have to be very very diligent in in checking out the rules in an HOA if you're if you're looking at an HOA. But as far as the city and the state is concerned, they're super short term rental friendly. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, is there anything else that you feel like we missed that we might need to touch on before we go that the listeners would benefit from hearing about why someone might want to buy in Scottsdale? I mean, 
I don't know. To me, it's more like, why not? You know, (laughs) there you have it. All right, cool guys. Well, thanks so much for your time and listeners. If you guys are ready to buy something in Scottsdale with Leslie or Jessica, you can email us at agents at the short term shop.com and we will get you connected with them. Or if you just want to hang out and learn more about short term rentals, you can do that in our Facebook group. It's the same title as my book right behind me. It's called short term rental, long term wealth on Facebook. And we also have a live Q&A every Thursday that you can join and ask us questions about investing in short-term rentals. And you can join that at strquestions.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks.